Welcome Walnut. I'm Lara, but you can call me Laz, your host for Walnut Wednesday. This is your reminder to be brave, be yourself, and know that you can make the world a better place just by what you decide today. Here, I'm going to share my weekly walnuttings with you on a Wednesday. Welcome to another episode of Walnut Wednesday. It is me, Laz, your host, and I am really excited and happy to welcome back Lulu Deem from episode 143. Welcome back, Lulu. Hi, yay, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, so Lulu actually like prompted this really good discussion that we were having offline, and we thought we would bring it back to you, Walnut. So Lulu, for the Walnuts that don't know you, do you want to just quickly say hello and introduce yourself? Um, although, Walnut, you can head back to episode 143 um, to get all the goss on Lulu, but just real quick. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, I am Lulu Deem. I live in um, a place called New Plymouth, um, which is in New Zealand on the North Island. Um, I am a marketing specialist by day, um, but Outside of my day job, I am the cool auntie in my family. I am a dog mom. I am uh, a bride-to-be, which is very exciting. Um, And I also like to make and share uh, interesting low-carb, sugar-free or keto recipes on my socials in my spare time. So that's where I kind of dabble in the online space whenever I've got a free moment. I literally will not love lulu's instagram and tiktok like it's so fun you're you're so good at it like <laughs> honestly you're my inspiration <laughs> oh thanks <laughs> i love it um so well now what lulu and i wanted to sort of chat about um was in the themes along the lines of diet culture um the like christmas new year period because um if you're in new zealand you already know it's summertime if you're not in new zealand um you might not get this around this time but it's this this sort of like balancing act of like enjoying yourself and eating what you want but then also having to have this like not i'm doing air bunny quotes having to have um a bikini body and shredding for summer looking good um while also being like all consumed with comments all around you from like your mums and your grandmas and the people who are like oh i'll just be a little bit naughty and like (laughs) this yeah um, detrimental way of speaking about um food through this like holiday you know december january season particularly in the southern hemisphere um it sort of spawned from Lulu. You had a comment on one of your social medias because you got mainly food related content. Do you want to um, start us off with? You don't have to share if you don't want to, but do you want to start yeah, us off? With no, that? I can start with that because it gives a little bit of context as to how we together started this conversation, right? Uh, and then how it kind of ended up being just well timed given tis the season and all that, right? So <laughs> I. Um, I share, uh, well, I'll actually start with, I follow a keto diet and I follow that mostly for health reasons. But um, as I've been doing it um, for a couple of years, maybe two and a half years now, obviously I have lost some weight and that's been really um, exciting for me. And I've been very proud of those results. Um, but the reason I follow the diet is is largely health related um, to help with my, I have um, PCOS and insulin resistance. Um, so it's mainly been focused around uh, um, helping with that condition um, but obviously I'm creating this kind of content that's um, you know for for the large part I try and focus on recipes and just sharing recipes that whether you're following this diet or not you can still enjoy the recipes they make tasty food but then I also share things every now and then like what I eat in a day kind of food diary things um, sometimes I share kind of before and after weight loss pictures and um, I did have a, a a comment on a, a TikTok once where I'd kind of just found a trending audio and it, I'd used it to kind of poke fun at people who who try the keto diet but don't try it properly. And so um, I, I had this girl leave a comment that was kind of along the lines of like, oh, you shouldn't be promoting diet culture on this app. Like this app is targeted at a really young demographic and it's it's targeted at, you know, a lot of children and teenagers and, and that's really toxic um, to say those kinds of things. And I was a little bit hurt by the comment initially, but um, it, it really gave me the opportunity to to reflect on what I put out into the world. And I know that I'm sharing all of this with the best of intentions, right? Like I share all of this stuff 
because I'm really proud of my own personal achievements and I really like what I eat and I like to share what I eat with people um, and sometimes I use it as an accountability thing but I'm I'm not using it from a place of I'm trying to sell you something or I'm trying to convince you to convert to this diet or I'm trying to promote something to you right I'm, I'm not coming at it from that angle and so I kind of commented back and said oh you know I don't see myself as contributing to that toxic diet culture I don't I think I'm just sharing my journey and then she made a really good point that that particular video that she was commenting on it was kind of like a fun play at like kind of poking fun at people who tried the diet but they'd been unsuccessful and so then I really thought okay actually this particular video is an example of that's not actually um, content coming out of those good intentions which most of my content does come from mm. and so since then I've I've often kind of prompted myself with those thoughts, right? Before I post something, whether it's a TikTok or, or um, pictures on Instagram or, or anything, I kind of stop and prompt myself, like, is this a is this a really toxic diety thing that I'm saying, or is just this just me sharing something because I like it, or I'm happy with it, or I'm enjoying it, and I'm just sharing, right? So I think there's this really interesting perspective that I have where I I feel like I'm because I share content that's in this space, um, I'm often towing the line between um, toxic diet culture and um, just sharing my own journey and sharing my own perspective and my own successes, right? And I find that it, particularly when I share um, a before and after or a you know any kind of comparison photos of my weight loss, because I don't want to be... Um, sh I'm sharing that from, like I say, really harmless intentions I'm sharing that with the best of intentions that I'm just sharing about myself but I do wonder if people see that and are triggered by that or if people see that and think you know they interpret it as me saying there was anything wrong with me in that first picture right because there wasn't anything wrong with me um I just had some undiagnosed medical conditions at the time um that were causing some weight struggles um but I don't I don't share them from a perspective of I was any less than or I was any less valuable or I was any less loved in that first picture, right? They're, they are just a, a snapshot of physical progress, but it does every time I post a before and after, I do kind of have that thought in my mind since that slightly mean TikTok comment yeah. <laughs> prompted, prompted that perspective that, um, you know, are people triggered by this? Is it, is it, is it fair for me to show that because I'm proud of myself and I want to show my journey and if they're triggered that that's just up to them and they can unfollow um, or do I need to be really mindful of, of, of what I'm doing in this space and what I'm putting out into the space. So I, I do still share, I, I still share whatever I want to share, right? Because it is my journey, but it, it's just given me a really interesting perspective where I try to toe the line and I try to be really careful about the terminology that I use and I try to speak in a way when I'm sharing progress, that it's it's not detrimental to who I was before, right? There was not anything wrong with the Lulu in the first picture that was a little bit heavier, right? There wasn't anything wrong with her. She wasn't any less than. Um, I'm not saying that if you look like that, there's anything wrong with you. Um, but yeah, it just prompted this really interesting kind of um, thought around that, that I'm towing this line between not wanting to yeah, promote the diet for anybody else but I also think I'm well entitled to share that it's worked for me and then maybe somebody else who does want to try it will find that content and find it valuable so it's just a very interesting um it's a very interesting perspective <laughs> yeah it is a it's a really I'm glad that you've brought this to Walnut Wednesday because I first of all just want to like congratulate you on how you received that comment and how like you did a response or I don't know the terminologies but like how you chose to reflect over just react um mm. like your first initial response when we we're talking offline was like oh what the hell yeah <laughs> I know? was like oh she's so mean <laughs> yeah um and then you know you thought about it a little bit later and was like hmm okay like how can I like choose to be posting my content yeah. in a different way because of this this point that that was actually raised that was actually kind of a good point that came out of a mean one <laughs> which wasn't actually yeah, yeah. mean it was just a really interesting point so I just want to congratulate you on how you chose to receive that and what you cho chose to um do about it because um 
yeah, a lot of the time we're very surface level as a society and we just <laughs> respond, react, and then you have these big like online social media called comments, comment wars <laughs> that yeah, are just yeah, like yeah. not not helpful to anyone. Um another point I wanted to sort of like touch on was like I think when when you are in a space of sort of sharing yourself on social media and stuff you I remember it just reminded me of this moment that I had with um a mentor of mine where like I just sort of started Walnut Wednesday and I didn't I was sharing all this like vulnerable stuff and it obviously opened me up to um getting feedback from other people who had gone through like similar like either tough things or whatever and I was getting yeah sort of private messages about people with like who have had these horrible things happen to them or you know um tried to try to self-harm and all this kind of stuff and I was like I don't know how to respond like what am I supposed to do like I'm just literally Mm. sharing my journey (laughs) to encourage other people to share their their journey you know like so I kind of resonate with this like fine line thing because it's like at what point does it become do you become a Uh, I'm just sharing on social media, like someone who just posts photos of their friends and stuff Mm. to someone who actually um, can hold space and have like influence. And I'm not saying that I'm like an influencer or anything, but like it really opened my eyes up to that. So I'd lost my train of thought here, but that was one point I wanted to make where you kind of just do open by sharing on social media you're almost like doing like a terms and conditions contract with yourself to open yourself up to receiving comments or receiving feedback that you didn't yeah. necessarily like prepare yourself for i think that's what i was kind yeah, of yeah even even if it's criticism right mm. and then you also kind of automatically i think i mean obviously we're both very kind of small scale in terms of our platform size but i think that um, it's common for people with a larger platform, especially those who kind of surprisingly go viral, right? And they grow this massive platform overnight. It's like all of a sudden they're in this space where they're expected to be a role model. And it's kind yeah. of like, well, I didn't actually ask to be a role model. I'm just here to share about my own stuff. And if if you think I'm, you know, oh, you shouldn't be saying this because you're putting the wrong messages into the, it's like, well, I didn't, I wasn't asking everybody to (laughs) you know the whole world to come and read it or the whole world to come and see it I'm just sharing it because I'm proud of it or I like it or or whatever like that so it's it's kind of yeah it's kind of interesting yeah and so I wanted to also while I'm remembering touch on like so yes you have the responsibility as the content maker for the stuff but I feel like in terms of diet things and because I am a yo-yo kind of like open heart center kind of person um I've tried all these different things and I found what kind of works for me and then sometimes I just fight around and I don't do anything Mm. um I feel like as the viewer there is also this other responsibility that people don't really talk about because there's so much blame going on or not blame but you know so much opinions being shoved at the person creating the content actually as the viewer you have a responsibility as well where um you choose how to take in that information. You choose how yeah. to um, go, oh, okay, this this um, woman is posting about keto. Um, she looks amazing. It's your responsibility to go, oh, is that something for me? Or is do I want to try that and continue to follow and do all the recipes and things? Or can I just swipe it away and leave for sure? Yeah, <laughs> or do I just think, oh, she looks great and then I just keep scrolling right and and I and I think no more of it I think what that person's comment kind of yeah raised I want to go back to the before and after photo stuff Lulu because as a person yeah. who has done the before and after photos of being biggest I've ever been and then doing an eight-week challenge looking tan looking delicious looking like I've just like smashed this out and then going binge eating when the challenge was finished um I'd love for you to talk to the feeling of the before and after photos now that you've had this this comment. You sort of touched on it. Yeah, earlier. they're just a they're just a really piece interesting piece of content, right? No matter who they're coming from or where they are, um, because they can kind of be used for you or against you, right? And my my thought that I had and then I lost before was that it's one something that works for someone won't work for everybody, right? So you're kind of 
like I'm sharing something from perspective of this has worked for me, but might not necessarily work for other people. So I'm not going to come out here and preach it to everybody and say it is the solution for the whole world, right? I'm just out here saying it worked for me and not for others. And that's what other people do, right? They say, I went to this great eight week boot camp fitness challenge and it worked really well for me. Here's my results. But they, they don't need to come from an angle of everybody sign up. Everybody needs to do this. You need to do this, right? They don't need to, um, push that kind of agenda that that they're here to, to say what's right and wrong for someone else because everybody's different and for some people yeah that type of fitness challenge might be really successful but for other people like me I would be miserable every day <laughs> of that kind of challenge and it's absolutely not for me right for some people like me I, I learned to really love the keto diet and for other people they would be like what do you mean no carbs absolutely not <laughs> you know um and it just wouldn't be right for them because it would make them miserable right so it's everybody's different but um before and after photos or or any type of then and now or comparison photos are really interesting um and we have to be so careful with the way that we um absorb them from mm -hmm. the the world wide web right because they are very easy to fake they are very easy to um to you know Take, take them five minutes apart, but because you, you know, you changed the lighting, you zoomed in a little bit less and you sucked in your tummy a bit better, all of a sudden it looks like you did lose four kgs. And, and there are companies out there who do definitely contribute to the toxicity of the diet culture by doing that. They, they manipulate people into thinking there's these immediate results from a, a, a weight loss tea or something, right? And you can... I know how to see through that, right? I can look at those pictures and be like, yep, that's, those are taken five minutes apart and somebody who's just sucked it in. Um, that's not the results of a, a meal replacement shake over 12 weeks or a, you know, really strict fitness regime with this particular piece of equipment that they're trying to sell me, right? I, I can kind of see through that, but there's so many people, especially young people, especially young women who who see that and, and they think that it is this, this miracle cure if there's a product being promoted um, with before and afters like that. So it's, we have to, as consumers, be very, very careful around how companies and products can use those to almost manipulate us or almost trick us. But then what does that say for the people like me who are just girl next door, kind of just sharing my own photos you know, like then are people going to look at that with a level of skepticism and say, oh, she's got slightly different lighting there and she took the photo on a different angle and she's probably sucking in, right? So I, I try and be really mindful of that when I take mine and I try and take them with the same background and take them at the same, t same time of day. Um, where I can, I will like be wearing the same clothes so you can see that those tights are a little bit looser and things like that. But that's yeah. not always realistic. But um, yeah, I just try and make sure that I'm doing the best that I can to put authentic, realistic um, photos of, of that type of content out into the world because there is so much that's faked. And it's very easy to Photoshop those types of things even. And then people sometimes do videos and then people say, oh, you can't fake it because it's a video. Well, there are apps that can make you skinnier in the video, right? There is an app for everything. You can edit anything these days. And and it's even reasonably accessible, right? Kids, oh young, kids, young kids have smartphones. They can download an app from the app store and they can they can manipulate images and videos of themselves. So yeah, it's just a it's a really interesting um it's a really interesting type of content. And and yeah, just I just want to reiterate that as consumers, you just have to be so careful about what you take in and what you what you um, take in as as the truth because sometimes they aren't. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad you touched on the consumer thing because I have a little note here to say like we live in the age of the consumer, right? Like yeah. everyone is trying to sell you something and to try and make you feel like you need to be something else so that um they can make money and the diet one is like this it's a huge huge um rabbit hole and there's an influencer walnut who lulu and i both love who she actually just posts like how the instagram models um like pose and stuff i've got a friend of mine she actually does yeah. modeling and i got a photo shoot for walnut wednesday's third birthday and it's so hard it's actually so hard to get a nice photo and I didn't actually realize this I thought oh my gosh it's just like everyone just like they do these candid photos and blah 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 you have to like stand in awkward position so that like <laughs> the angle is really good and I went back to my model friend because I remember talking to her years ago 
And she was like, yeah, you have to like twist your body and all these ankles. Like it, it looks like you just lie there, but you're not. You're like holding yourself in really uncomfortable ways Pinting. to make it look like you're relaxed. Like it's bizarre. So it's just, you never really know, Walnut, what is, yeah, like Lulu was saying, like photoshopped or edited or even the complete total discomfort behind a, yeah. behind a toned and like you should look like this kind of photo um yeah and what I love about that um the influencer that you mentioned before Danae Musa is that she um she almost debunks um influencer you know fitness or weight loss poses kind of thing right so she she puts herself in the pose and says here here it is I look so skinny I look so slim my bum looks nice and round my skin looks tight and then she almost turns and she's like okay this is what I've done I've tensed this I've used this type of lighting I've used this angle I've used this I've used this and so I find that just so fascinating because I'm like oh okay it's really good to see that she is just a real person behind it all but you know then you look at all the kind of influencers or really big names out in the social space who who are never showing that behind the scenes, right? They're only showing that posed version and they're only showing that really curated version. And I just think, why are they so scared to share the real them, right? Why are they so so adamant about, about posing away um, their flaws or using lighting to mask their cellulite kind of thing? You know, I just think if everybody just, just posted photos of what they actually look like, then society would just accept those things. Yeah. A bit <laughs> and wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah, totally. And I'm noticing like the trend at the moment is like coming back to like the early 2000s. And I'm like, please not the skinny eyebrows please again. Not but with, low rise jeans. No, oh, but can't. with skinny eyebrows and with low rise jeans and with the twig arm thing, which I, I've talked about this on the podcast before, has been so detrimental to my self-worth and self-love um because I grew up in the age of like how low you could have your jeans and how flat it could stay and stuff and it's just yep. that like social media has the power has has the opportunity to be so powerful and influence that because I feel like a lot of people in like our generation Lulu where it's like we all have a very small portion of body dysmorphia because of that fashion there's trend and I hope it doesn't come back. A lot of, there's definitely a lot of millennial women panicking about low-rise jeans. Oh <laughs> yeah. A lot of us. <laughs> so don't worry, Walnut, if you're hearing this and you're thinking the same thing, you are not alone. We are yeah. all panicking about low-rise jeans coming back. And <laughs> um, I... I I like to go back, I like to kind of play on this a, a little bit as well with some of the like things I've posted as well, Walnut, where like I I posted a before and after photo um, where I'm bigger, uh, but it was more from the person who it was. Like I was, I was like a really, I was fine. I was a normal size, um, but I had bought jeans that were too small and I was tried to squished into them and I took a before photo to be like, look how flat I can get my muffin top before I fit into these to these jeans <laughs> with a photo of me like now where I'm like a good maybe two to three sizes heavier or not heavier, bigger. Um, really happy and content with how how I look, but it just goes to show that like, that before photo, I I really don't know how to like articulate this in a in a different way. But yeah, what what does the before photo actually mean about you? Like me in that moment when I took it, I felt like absolute crap about myself. But why does it need to? I, there was nothing wrong with me, and you only find that in hindsight. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's why I'm. Do you have anything to add here, Lulu? Yeah, I think that. The, yeah, I think I think that's interesting. And so another kind of thing that I've found, and um, there's a couple of people I follow on Instagram who've who've got the same kind of mindset, which is you should be smiling in any before picture or after picture or any neutral picture or any progress picture. So I, I'm either smiling or pretty neutral, right? Because that's the other thing is that if you look at a before picture and you're just so absolutely depressed. <laughs> and then your after is that you actually gain some weight and you're a little bit fluffier. Then it's like, oh, if I was that depressed at that smaller size, I should be more sad 
about this larger size, right? Yeah. Whereas if you're just neutral in both, then it's just, it, you can literally look at it for a more neutral lens. It's like, okay, I was that size and now I'm this size. And whether it's bigger or smaller, it's like, well, I was still me. I was still smiling. I was still loved. I was still a great friend. I was still an awesome family member. Yeah. Like it, it kind of takes the, um, almost the associations of happiness away from, you know, happiness isn't reliant on weight or size or yeah. shape um, kind of thing. So yeah, that's kind of my only chip in is like, would it have been different if that before photo that you had, you looked really happy and you were really smiling and now you have an after photo that yeah, you might be bigger, but you were also happy and you were also smiling. And in both of the moments that you took both of those pictures, you actually really liked yourself. Yeah. Whereas you're, you're, you're now looking at a perspective of like, oh, I really wasn't that happy with myself for this reason, this reason, this reason. And now those things are, are different. Um, so yeah, I think it's really interesting that you should always try and compare yourself um, in, a, in a more neutral way and, and try and keep the mindset that it's, it's not a reflection of your value and it's not a reflection of your happiness or self, self-worth. You know, it's it's literally just a reflection of your physical appearance in a point in time. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. It is just your physical appearance at a point in time. It does not it, mean it's anything it. about you. It doesn't. Size is so relative. <laughs> yeah, it, it's literally just a. It's just a snapshot, and it's just that's just all it is. And you know, you might go up from there. You might go down from there. You might fluctuate up and down 20 million times before you take the next photo right mm. it, it's just a snapshot in time um and and even when people do take before and afters that again it's showing an end result it's not showing their fluctuations up and down it's not showing how how happy or how sad they were or how how great their confidence skyrocketed and then how badly it plummeted it's not showing any of that it is only showing physical appearance so you have to kind of take it for what it is um a photograph is nothing but a, you know a snapshot of your physical appearance and what you associate it with of your feelings and your thoughts at that time is really up to you when you when you take it and when you share it yeah which is really interesting um, and I think that that kind of leads us into the seasonal chat, right? Like mm -hmm. we're coming into new year now where there's just going to be all this messaging, especially, you know, we're here in New Zealand, so it's summer for us over the holidays. So there's, you know, get summer ready, get your bikini body ready, um, summer shred, um, you know, lose your Christmas kgs, all that kind of all that kind of really toxic, really harmful messaging and um I think it's really important to tell walnuts that you don't, you don't actually have to do that. <laughs> like I know that you're going to be really almost bombarded, um, especially in January with that, you know, new year, new me kind of stuff. That's going to tell you that, that to increase your value, you know, to make you um, more acceptable on the beach, you need to buy this weight loss product or get this gym membership or, whatever but at the end of the day get a bikini and put it on your body and you've got a bikini body yeah. there you go it's just as simple as that right and um and when you when you consume you know we we do tend to consume a lot more over the holiday period right christmas is full of all the yummy foods but um guilt doesn't have to be one of those ingredients right you don't have to consume all of that food and then come yeah. out and be like oh i've just consumed and all i'm just overcome with guilt and i need to burn all of this off and i have to do this and i have to get rid of all that christmas weight and i ate too much so now i have to do tons and tons of exercise in the new year um you can just eat all the extra food and then just carry on as normal and <laughs> also fine. like how much extra is the food is the food really like you're still gonna have your your three main meals and a little bit of extra snacks but yeah is that really going to make you gain like 10 kilos in two days i i really don't think so walnut and it's just this it's this mindset and the way that we are um as a society or brought up to speak about ourselves and this leads to a really good comment that um kate posted in the walnut tree um because I popped walnut, if you didn't know, if you know, on the walnut tree, I popped a little discussion thread on Instagram and, and Facebook. Um, she said, it's hard when the conversations with friends are about having to work off the holiday food or talking negatively about their body. 
not everyone is kind to themselves and I'd be curious to know how to navigate those conversations without sounding preachy or judgy because honestly it's triggering hearing people talk like that about themselves so hatefully um which I totally agree with and if I knew the way how to sort of navigate through that I um I would definitely share it, but I think Me too. <laughs> <laughs> like calling it, calling it out for what it is. I've got a lot of friends who are just absolutely, totally beautiful. And the way that I sit when they're like, oh my God, I'm just, I just feel so fat today. I, I found in my experience going, stop saying that. No, you're not. Um, Comes from a really like almost naggy place, like a eye roll, like, oh, shut up, laugh. <laughs> shut up like all your like happiness about about bodies and things like obviously I'm a human and I don't have that all the time but um one way I like to think of it is like well you wouldn't say that to me so why are you saying that to yourself it sounds so cliche and so silly but like Mm -hmm. that comment oh my god I look so fat and disgusting today like would you say that to your daughter would you say that to your best friend no no okay well then why are you saying it to yourself that's one of the ways that I try to behave in but obviously my instinctual response is stop it don't say that stop it yeah (laughs) so is mine and I think that that was a really interesting comment um from Kate in the walnut tree because I definitely related to that around Christmas time because I I have one family member in particular who is very weight conscious and So even if I can manage to drown out all that noise of social media and drown out all that negative toxicity and consumer weight loss advertising, right? If I can drown all of that out, I'm still going to be here on Christmas Day hearing it in my ear from a family member, not in relation to myself, but in in relation to them. And and it's still difficult to hear, right? Because I don't want to have those conversations. I don't actually want to hear about how many kilograms you've gained this week and then how many you're targeting to lose next week and how you're going to do that. Like, I actually don't care. I actually love you. (laughs) I really do love you and I actually just couldn't care less about what your number on the scales is because it doesn't affect the relationship that I have with you as a family member. So I think that's going to be an interesting thing for me is how how I'm going to navigate around those types of conversations because I almost just yeah, I always almost just want to tune it out. I just don't, I'm not really interested in it. But it's something that this particular family member always wants to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say what do you think what do you think your response would be or what do you think their response would be if you turned around and said what you literally just said like I actually love you that's what I wonder I'm like do I is is it just a boundary that I need to kind of work on setting that and just saying like oh look I don't I don't really want to talk about that I really love you no matter what size you are and and just see if I can just shut it down right is that is that something I should experiment with (laughs) awesome Um, it's a fun it, it doesn't hurt to try <laughs> absolutely and it's an interesting experiment when when you when you're in these conversations because usually people are asking things with an expectation or saying statements like that with an expectation like is this person yeah. is this person just wanting a little bit of a butt licking and being told that yeah. they're actually are they fishing fishing for a compliment or yeah. fishing or fishing for um encouragement and saying, oh, yeah, well, you should get back into the gym, or, uh, or are they fishing for you're kind of reinforcing what they're saying? I'm not sure. Yeah. What is it that they're trying to get out of out of that conversation? Yeah, so that will be an interesting experiment too, is like when you're hearing those, those comments being made, try to, instead of just um, react, think about it a little bit a little deeper and like obviously there's context and all the things that come along with when when we're making comments like that but like maybe there is something else maybe there is a different response that we need to be making for the people that we love who are not on their walnut journey yet (laughs) and have not really looked into themselves that much um and sometimes it's as easy as is that again it's like the responsibility of the viewer or of the listener of the person that's like taking on on these comments from the people we love the most sometimes um to to respond or reflect rather than like react straight away going no (laughs) stop saying that (laughs) yeah but it's hard isn't it it's very hard that's what you want to say is shut up (laughs) yeah it's very very (laughs) difficult um i've got another comment here from the walnut tree um just on the topic of 
discussing diet culture and um and you know the the holiday season um Lorian said, I don't restrict myself because then I get obsessed with what I'm missing out on. I just try to keep a little more active and listen to my body. Always having healthier, easy to grab snacks helps me a lot from just binging on all the sugar. Um, I love this comment as well, Walnut, because I find, I've found that every time I've sort of tried to um, watch what I'm eating, even I hate that word coming out of my mouth, watch what I'm eating. Um, <laughs> preparation is key and I think that's not just even food related it's also like if I have to like do public speaking or whatever I've always found that being prepared and doing stuff for my future self always has been really helpful and Lulu I feel like potentially with keto for you being prepared is really key right as well yeah definitely it's something that you want to be organized for and you you have alternatives at hand and and that kind of thing but but my favorite part of that comment is the like you you don't want to restrict yourself but you do want to listen to your body I I really like that because that that's that's really important like I think you you should feel like there aren't things I'm not allowed this I'm I mean unless you have an allergy or you are celiac or yeah yeah, (laughs) you're deadly allergic to nuts right you know your own limits there but as as far as weight loss diets or or just general kind of health diets um you shouldn't arrive on Christmas day or at a new year's party or at you know a summer barbecue and feel like I'm not allowed this I'm not allowed this but you should be listening to your body and consuming foods that do make your body feel good right if you're looking at something thinking oh that looks delicious but that's gonna give me a really upset stomach the following day then like maybe you should take that into consideration right listen to your body listen to the things it likes listen to listen to the things that it doesn't like and listen to your body when it's full I think in in the holidays there's there's a a big thing around binging and we and we all eat more than we usually would and there's nothing wrong with that and we should enjoy extra foods um when we have those opportunities right but if you are full on getting into an absolute food coma where you can't move and you feel physically ill you probably should have listened to your body a little earlier when it said it was full <laughs> so yeah. I think there is definitely a little nugget of gold in that comment around you don't have to be restrictive, but you do need to listen. You do need to look after your body and and listen to it if it's trying to tell you something. Yeah, I have I have an argument with um with somebody pretty close to me about um you know like losing losing weight, and I'm like, well, I don't think I have to lose weight. I'm actually really happy as I am. But and they always come back with, yeah, but you're really unhealthy. We're really unhealthy, and I, I don't I don't find myself unhealthy at all like I just enjoy myself (laughs) and and how would they know that right they're not your doctor right they haven't run your blood tests or taken your cholesterol or like that's not that's not really for anybody to say whether or not you're healthy that's between you and your medical practitioner to decide (laughs) if you are healthy at this size or not that's nobody else's business and we don't um you know it's it's 2022 or 2023 when this episode is right like we don't associate weight and health so closely together like come on guys get with the times like people can be um much bigger and even overweight and they can still be very fit and very strong and they can have a really healthy heart and they can have great strong muscles right athletes they can be athletes like it's not um it's such a broader spectrum of health now. So it doesn't, we, we can't now look at people who are overweight and instantly think, oh, they're unhealthy because that's, that's a lot of the time just not true. Mm. And, and if they are, that's none of your business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it comes like, I'm sure that, that I'm sure that they probably know that and they don't need somebody else to tell them. So. Yeah. I love that. Um, health, um, I heard a, a, on another podcast recently, I think the term was health at every size or health at all sizes. So it's like the, there's there's not a direct alignment between thinness and health, right? Health mm-hmm. comes at every size. There are 
there is unhealthy skinny people and there are unhealthy fat people, but there are also very, very healthy, very large people and very, very healthy, very thin, petite people, right? It's like health can come at every size. And so no matter what size you are, you should always just be striving to be healthy, not to be smaller, I guess. Yeah. And I, oh, this is, I feel like I could kind of go around and around on so many different parts of this conversation, Lulu. It's such a big topic. It's so fascinating. I'm getting like mind boggled because then we could go down like, oh, okay. There's so many roads. I'm going to read one more question. Um, Oh, I've got two more actually from Instagram. Someone on Instagram commented, it's all about balance, (laughs) which is a word yeah it's an interesting word enjoy some goodies and then reduce but not restrict after christmas um walnut you'll be on the back end of christmas now when you're hearing this but i would be very very interested to know how you how you feel about yourself now being in the new year and um now a couple of uh a few days a few weeks away from the Christmas time of not mm. restriction. Um, Lulu, do you have anything to add about that comment? Um, not specifically. Yeah, I think it would be interesting to hear how other people how other people feel about it on on the other side of Christmas. Yeah, I think yeah, reducing and not restricting that's that's good. But then I I also think it's um, not so much reducing as to me from my perspective. It's, it's like going back to normal. Like you kind of have these couple of days where you you know you're going to have a a lot more than normal. And so it's like how quickly can you just go back to normal, right? That's going to help your body um, settle back in and kind of balance out. Lulu, before we kind of start wrapping up, I, we've gone down like 10 different <laughs> tangents on this episode, <laughs> but I think it's really relevant as well. So Walnut, please, if you have any additional commentary, just comment in the Walnut tree so Lulu and I can come back to continuing this on because yeah, there's so many different different avenues. I don't think, Lulu, we've particularly debunked anything. We've just had a really great chat. <laughs> I, we've just discussed it, right? But I think that's it. I think that when a Walnut listens to this, I just I just think it'll be really good for you to just be more mindful of this stuff when you see it, when you hear it, when you're interpreting it, just be careful what you absorb in the consumer world. Just be careful what you put out. Um, Be careful what you say to other people. Um, I think, yeah, I just, I just want to keep coming back to the point that, that everybody's different and, and what works for everybody is different, right? So the particular diet that I follow has worked really, really well for me. It's been really beneficial for my health and it's helped me lose a lot of weight. But I don't go out here and tell everybody to do it, right? Because it's not necessarily going to work for everybody else, right? I Actually, I've had quite a few people DM me and be like, oh, I want to try this diet. Where should I start? And I'm like, you shouldn't. <laughs> like, I don't think it's going to work for you. It's very restrictive. Um, why don't you try this, um, like low carb, like a kind of gentler version of it instead that's not so... Um, specific not so restricted and not so counting right because you count your carbs on keto so I like often actually steer people away from it first because I just know that it's not always going to work for a lot of people um and yeah same with exercise regimes right you come and you say oh I did this wonderful um I don't know I joined this wonderful gym and I did this program everybody should do it right that doesn't mean that that's going to work for somebody else because that um you know, their body might not respond in the same way that yours does, or they might just not enjoy it, which means they don't stick to it. Same with any diet, right? Some people might go calorie counting and think this works so well, it's it's perfect, everybody should do it. And then other people might be like, I can't think of anything worse than counting and weighing (laughs) the food that goes into my mouth. Like, that's a really unhealthy mindset for some people. So I just think there's so many factors that can make... um, a diet or weight loss or health programs work or not work for different people. So I don't think that anybody should be out here pushing their agenda and pushing what worked for them as, as this kind of miracle cure, right? Because it's so different for everybody. And even if you did discover something that's a miracle cure for you, then by all means, you should share that with the world. You should be very proud of yourself. You should be very happy with what you've found. And you should be entitled to put that out on your socials and talk about how great it is, but you, you shouldn't be selling it, right? You shouldn't, you shouldn't be forcing it on people and you shouldn't, you know, go to a family gathering and, 
tell your cousin that she needs to do it too, right? <laughs> that's not <laughs> that's not really the direction that you go, right? Because I've I have people on TikTok that um that consistently comment and be like, keto is really bad, keto is really bad, blah blah blah, or um oh you just need to do a calorie deficit, right? Calorie deficit, calorie deficit, just get in the calorie deficit. It's so much easier, right? And I think it's just really it's really unhealthy that that people even comment that kind of thing right because I'm like that's really great that that has worked for you or that's really great that you tried the keto diet and it didn't work for you but you don't need to come and tell me that because I'm just over here in my personal life in my own bubble and I'm doing what works for me and it's not hurting you right Mm -hmm. and it's not affecting you so why do you feel the need to come here and preach a different thing to try just because it, it worked for you and it's actually like metabolically doesn't work for everybody right there's this big thing at the moment that a calorie deficit is the be all end all and it, and it works for everybody and it's this master solution right but there's a lot of uh information out there to debunk that and for people who have conditions like insulin resistance or diabetes or people who have a damaged metabolism um people who have metabolic conditions uh from previous eating disorders all sorts of things like that um it won't it won't necessarily work for them so it's kind of like you you can you can love a way of eating or love a fitness program or love a diet for yourself and you can love what it's done for you but you don't need to go and and throw it on everybody I think is is a fine line to teeter between really enjoying it yourself and trying to force it onto other people because you're almost contributing to that culture right that consumerism of like buy this try this do this this is the solution this is the cure kind of thing which is what we've talked about not being very good (laughs) and not always very honest (laughs) yes it's almost like outsmarting the advertisement (laughs) or like yeah (laughs) something like that i i also wanted to just um add on the on the back end of that lulu is um for you walnut to give yourself grace as well if things if you change your mind when um you've tried something and it's worked really well and then one day it doesn't anymore um I used to be really I found what worked for me was to go really low carb almost keto-ish but not not entirely and that really helped me like in one of the one of the challenges I did way back when um and I managed to actually maintain that for a long time afterwards um and it was also with like high intensity training at like a culty kind of gym um loved it i loved it for for that time and then all of a sudden i woke up and i was like this i don't like the atmosphere here anymore and i changed and i went into weight training loved it still do love it i feel strong i like building on things i like how i feel strong underneath my like actual <clears throat> skin and everything but now i've i've recently woken up going oh i think i want to go back to the high intensity th-, you know like so give yourself that grace if you if you feel like chopping and changing as well um because there's there's nothing you're not a failure if you change your mind basically is is the messaging i yeah. want to say behind that sort of thing um lulu did you have anything else that you wanted to touch on before i ask you the token walnut question <laughs> i think we've we've covered a lot we have I hope that whoever's listening to this has found some value out of it because i know it has gone in um in in 20 million different directions because it is just such a big topic and and when i kind of asked Laz about this topic i did say like oh i've just got lots of perspectives and i've got lots of interesting things to say about it and i you know i'm kind of in that space in my socials so i kind of feel like i'm in this really awkward perspective and with I can see both sides and yeah so I just I hope that you've you've been able to follow this conversation and our and our sporadic train of thought and everywhere that it's led us um yeah and I and I I hope it's helped somebody in some way amazing and um Lulu do you just want to say where the walnuts can follow you on the social medias for your content that I'm obsessed with so I'm sure yes um very exciting yeah so my instagram is at luludeem l-u-l-u-d-e-a-m um it is an interesting name to spell but if you if you manage to spell it right you should find me and then tiktok is the same but it's lulu underscore deem um because luludeem was taken on tiktok for whatever reason so you can find me there 
Um, I usually post, um, yeah, obviously TikTok's a video platform. So there's a lot more kind of day in the life, kind of food diary, kind of a bit more fun video stuff. Instagram, I like to do um, the, the same, but also, you know, there's still just pictures about meal, insp meal inspiration and, and things like that. So awesome follow and, me on both <laughs> yeah definitely do walnut and make sure you go back to episode 143 um to find out like the love story between lulu and i because we actually know each other in real <laughs> life we're like known each other for years so um if you want to get all the behind the scenes well not really behind the scenes but the goss on our the relationship context. yeah <laughs> the context me and lulu and a little bit more of like lulu's like life in general um that episode's a really good one to check out as well um Lulu, final question for you. In relation to sort of the topic we've been diving into, what does being a walnut mean to you? I think in the in the context of this conversation, it, and this conversation has a lot of context, right? So the, the first one is when you're, I think, what we talked about in the first half around um, putting content out and what you put out into the world and what you talk about in the world. I think being a walnut means just staying true to your intentions, right? So I think for me personally, the walnutting in this space is that I'm putting this content out and I know that my intentions are coming from a good place. So regardless of if somebody leaves a mean comment or accuses me of being part of toxic diet culture, right? I I know that my intentions are just to share myself and my journey kind of thing. So I think being a walnut in that context is yes, yeah, just just staying true to the intentions in your heart. And then I think just in terms of of diet culture more in general. I think being a walnut means not letting anyone else dictate how you feel about your body, be that advertisements, family members who have something to say, influencers who are promoting a product. Um, you should just feel how you feel about your body, even on a good day or a bad day. You should just don't let anybody else contribute to how you feel about that. It's all about yourself. Um, just, just feel how you feel and that's okay. And you have permission. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Thank you so much. And thank you, Lulu, for visiting Walnut Wednesday, the podcast again. It's been such a pleasure. <laughs> thank you um, so much for having me, even though I self-invited myself for this no, episode. <laughs> it, was, it was a great self-invitation and a great walnutting indeed, because we've had this awesome chat now. Um, I'm not going to walnut keep you too much longer because um, I might open up another whole rabbit hole, but we <laughs> have a wonderful um, holiday period. If you're still on holiday, please drive safe. Please eat the food guilt-free. <laughs> um, just know that you are beautiful, sexy, and delicious. And thank you so much for your time today. And I appreciate you for being here. And I appreciate you for being you. And Lulu, yeah, thank you so much for visiting again. Um, thank you so much for having me. Have a happy Walnut Wednesday. And I will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.